The west coast of the United States is an earthquake hotspot for the country. Everyone expects the big one to hit California at some point in the future. But within the heart of the United States is one of the country's least understood but most seismically active regions, the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Here's why this area will suffer from a series of devastating earthquakes in the future and what will happen when they hit. Welcome to Geography by Jeff. Today, we're off to explore the New Madrid Seismic Zone, a region of the country that most don't expect to have a large earthquake, but is going to shake, rattle, and roll at some point in the future. And when it does, people in this part of the country will have a difficult time recovering. But first, this week's podcast episode is all about Pangaea, the mega continent that would eventually split apart to create all of the landmasses we know and love today. As you can imagine, this is going to be an incredible episode exploring the historic geography of our world and how things continue to be connected by its historic roots. You can watch that episode right now on YouTube or on whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. All links are in the description below. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, often overshadowed by its more famous counterparts in California, the Pacific Northwest, and Alaska, is one of the more dangerous seismic regions of the United States. Stretching across several states including Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky, this seismic zone has the capability to disrupt the lives of millions of Americans. The origins of the New Madrid seismic zone can be traced back to about 750 million years ago during the Precambrian era when the supercontinent Rodinia began to break apart. This event led to the formation of a rift valley which over millions of years failed to split the continent entirely. It was this failed rift that formed a weak zone in the Earth's crust, setting the stage for future seismic activity. This ancient rift, now buried deep beneath layers of sediment from the Mississippi River, is why this region is surprisingly hilly amidst an otherwise flat topography. The Mississippi River, the lifeblood of this region overall, meanders through the heart of the New Madrid seismic zone, creating a broad alluvial plain that serves as a crucial artery for commerce, agriculture, and transportation. The river's floodplain, characterized by rich, fertile soils, has historically supported extensive agricultural development, with vast fields of cotton, soybeans, and other crops stretching across the landscape. Adjacent to the river, the terrain rises gently into the Ozark Plateau to the west and the Appalachian Mountains to the east, providing a stark contrast to the flat floodplains. These uplands, with their rugged hills and forests, offer a different aspect of the region's physical geography, showcasing the variety of habitats and ecosystems present in the area. The Ozarks, known for their karst landscapes with numerous caves, springs, and sinkholes, contribute unique geological features that add to the region's topography. The seismic zone itself, while defined by its underground faults, has influenced the surface geography in subtle ways. Earthquakes have altered the course of rivers, including the Mississippi River, created new water bodies, and reshaped the land through liquefaction and landslides, leaving behind a landscape that bears the scars of its geologic history. The seismic activity in the New Madrid seismic zone is characterized by intraplate earthquakes, which occur within the interior of a tectonic plate rather than at the boundaries where such events are more common. This makes the earthquakes in this region somewhat mysterious to scientists, as they occur far from the edge of the North American plate. The zone is not defined by a single fault line, but rather by a network of faults that crisscross the region. These faults are hidden beneath the Earth's surface, making them difficult to study and understand fully. It's for this reason that few people have ever really expected a major earthquake to hit this region, despite having a history of causing a lot of damage. Today, the New Madrid Seismic Zone remains a significant concern for geologists and emergency planners alike. While it hasn't caused any issues recently, history has shown just how destructive it can be. But before we get to the history of earthquakes in this region, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. The New Madrid Seismic Zone is not in an area of the United States that most people would assume is at risk of earthquakes. It's located in the middle of the country, basically on the border between Missouri, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Kentucky. Despite this, however, there are millions of people at risk today of a major earthquake. And we know this because it's happened before. In modern human history, the most defining series of earthquakes within the New Madrid Seismic Zone occurred in 1811 and 1812. During that time, a sequence of major earthquakes between magnitude 7.0 and 7.5 hit within the region. These were felt over an area of roughly 1 million square miles, an extent greater than any other series of earthquakes in the historic record of North America. 
Reports from the time described ground waves that could be seen as they rolled across the land, rivers that ran backward, vast fissures opening in the earth, and intense shaking that toppled chimneys and trees. The town of New Madrid, Missouri, located near the epicenter of the seismic activity, suffered extensive damage, and the landscape of the region was permanently altered, with new lakes forming and sections of the Mississippi River changing course. And due to the unique nature of the seismic zone, aftershocks were felt in the region until 1817, five years after the original event. Following the 1811 to 1812 earthquakes, the region experienced several other significant seismic events, though none have approached the magnitude of these early 1800s quakes. The largest earthquakes to have occurred since then were on January 4th, 1843 and October 31st, 1895, with magnitude estimates of 6.0 and 6.6 respectively. The 1895 event had its epicenter near Charleston, Missouri, and damaged virtually all buildings in the town. It also created sand volcanoes by the city, cracked a pier on the Cairo Rail Bridge, and toppled chimneys as far away as St. Louis, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Gadsden, Alabama, and Evansville, Indiana. And while not directly within the New Madrid seismic zone, a 5.4 magnitude quake on November 9th, 1968 near Dale, Illinois, illustrates that the entire region is perhaps more seismically active than we originally believed. The quake damaged the Civic Building at Henderson, Kentucky, and was felt in 23 states. Reportedly, people as far away as Boston, Massachusetts, felt their building sway due to the earthquake. In the years since, Scientists and historians have pieced together evidence to understand the long-term activity of the zone. This research has revealed that large earthquakes have occurred within the New Madrid area at intervals of approximately 500 years over the last few thousand years. However, these same scientists are mixed on the potential of future large earthquakes hitting the region. Despite the relative infrequency of large-scale seismic events in the New Madrid seismic zone compared to more active regions like California, the potential impact of a major earthquake in this area remains a significant concern. The region's population density and the built environment have changed dramatically since the early 1800s, raising the stakes for earthquake preparedness and resilience. And unlike the West Coast, where buildings and infrastructure are designed with seismic activity in mind, many structures in the central United States are not built to withstand the forces of a major quake. One of the most immediate and visible impacts of a significant seismic event in this region would be damage to buildings and infrastructure. Older structures, including residential buildings, schools, and hospitals, could sustain severe damage or collapse. Modern buildings, while generally more resilient, could also suffer from the effects of shaking, especially if not designed with the latest earthquake-resistant technologies, which many still are not. Beyond the immediate structural damage, Critical infrastructure such as bridges, roads, pipelines, and power lines could also be severely affected, disrupting transportation and communication networks. Interstate 55, connecting New Orleans to Chicago, would likely be unusable for a long period of time. Furthermore, the Mississippi River itself would also likely be unusable as a corridor for travel or trade. In the early 1800s, the Mississippi River was greatly disrupted, even reversing its flow for a time, and a future earthquake has the capacity to do the same. And even if it doesn't, debris will likely fill the river, making traversing it a big challenge. This would not only hamper emergency response efforts, but also have a cascading effect on supply chains, potentially leading to shortages of food, water, and medical supplies. According to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Mississippi River carried more than 500 million tons of imports, exports, and domestic freight in 2019. All of that would grind to a halt on the country's most important river. More locally, the agricultural sector, a significant part of the economy in the New Madrid seismic zone, would also face challenges. Soil liquefaction, a process where the shaking of an earthquake causes water-saturated sediment to temporarily lose its strength and behave like a liquid, could damage farmland while the destruction of storage facilities and transportation infrastructure could disrupt agricultural markets around the world. A 1991 FEMA report estimated damages from a 7.6 magnitude earthquake would result in about 2% of the population killed, up to 10% of the population seriously injured, around 10% of all buildings collapsed, and 30% of buildings receiving severe structural damage within the nearest counties to the epicenter. Another, more recent 2004 report, based on a 7.7 earthquake, estimated damages to be about $296 billion, with nearly 730,000 people displaced from their homes. Today, the New Madrid Seismic Zone is home to a little over 2.1 million people. This would be led by the Memphis, Tennessee metro region with 1.3 million people. Other population centers include Jonesboro, Arkansas with 135,000 people, Cape Girardeau with 100,000, and 45 other smaller towns and cities with a population greater than 1,000 people. 
but this doesn't include areas outside of the region that would still feel the impact such as St. Louis, Missouri, Nashville, Tennessee, and Evansville, Indiana, meaning a lot more people could feel the impact than just those within the New Madrid seismic zone. But while most people in this region are not expecting an earthquake anytime soon, despite existing on a well-known seismic area, Oklahoma, just one state over, has become quite accustomed to earthquakes without having any major fault lines or a long history of seismic activity. In recent years, Oklahoma has experienced an unprecedented surge in seismic activity, marked by swarms of earthquakes. These swarms, consisting of hundreds of small to moderate-sized earthquakes, represent a significant shift from the relatively mild historic seismic activity of the region. And unlike other regions of the world, the increase in seismic activity in Oklahoma has been linked to human activity, particularly the injection of wastewater into deep wells, a byproduct of oil and natural gas production. Oklahoma's seismic activity began to attract widespread attention around 2009, when the number of earthquakes in Oklahoma surged from an average of two magnitude 3.0 or greater earthquakes per year to over 500 in 2014. These earthquakes have been primarily concentrated in central and northern Oklahoma, though their effects have been felt across state borders. Overall, the swarms have included several significant seismic events, with magnitudes reaching up to 5.8, which was recorded near Pawnee, Oklahoma in 2016 and stands as the largest earthquake in modern Oklahoma history. Much more recently, a 5.1 earthquake struck near Oklahoma City, the state's largest population center. Overall, the quakes have caused damage to buildings, roads, and other infrastructure, and have been felt as far north as Fargo, North Dakota, and as far south as San Antonio, Texas. But unlike earthquakes in the New Madrid seismic zone, there's nothing natural about Oklahoma's newfound seismic history. Investigations into the cause of the earthquakes in the state have pointed to the injection of wastewater from oil and natural gas production back into the earth as a primary driver. This process, known as deep well injection, involves disposing of the wastewater by pumping it into deep geological formations. While this method effectively disposes of the wastewater, it has also been found to increase subsurface pressures, potentially leading to the reactivation of dormant faults, thus triggering the earthquakes. It's for this reason that Oklahoma now frequently gets earthquakes where, in decades prior, it was a very rare occurrence. A big earthquake will hit the New Madrid seismic zone at some point, and when it does, people within the zone will not have a good time. That said, the likelihood of a major swarm of earthquakes hitting the region anytime soon seems to be fairly low, which is more than can be said for Oklahoma's unique situation. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the New Madrid Seismic Zone. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to watch more videos, click here. If you want to listen to the podcast, click here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.